term page gets used a lot. So when I have, you know, the, 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 the Mike Hanbury's personal page there where I put pictures out there so my mom in Texas can, can see her grandchildren, that's my profile, all right? And then Webolutions has a, uh, what we used to call a fan page. Uh, so there are two different things. And the differences are you're limited as far as the amount of connections you can make on your profile. They top it at, uh, I want to say it's 5,000. There's no limit on your business fan page. The profile requires an offer and an acceptance, a two-way uh, uh, agreement that we are going to communicate here. We want to be connected here. Your fan page has no one. I like you. We're done. You know, and you have to go make some extra steps if you don't want me participating on your on your fan page. Fan page offers you analytics. You can go in there and see how you're how how, how you're doing with in terms of reach and, and attention share. There are no analytics available on the profile. So. Uh, and the classifications of which you mentioned are only relative to your personal profile and not to your fan page. So how would you go about if everybody's hooking up with you on your personal page and you want to move them over? The only real way, and, and Facebook does not allow you to say, okay, I'm going to take all your stuff and move it over here. That is an individual choice, all right? And you say as a business, well, that's not convenient for me. But then as an individual, you're kind of glad that they don't let you do that, that they, that, that they can't allow you to do that. So. The strategy behind doing that is just to start announcing over time, go build your page, establish a link to it, go get your custom URL, uh, and uh, uh, facebook.com slash username. You need 25 fans to go to facebook.com slash your business name. And then start putting your link out there. Hey, guys, much better uh, interaction over here. We're growing. We're moving this thing. And over time, and say, on this date, we're going to delete this profile and have everything over on this page. So periodically put that out there and give it a, you know, let's say a month. And say a month from now we're going to do this. You can also reach out and do that send message to friends, okay? And I would do that also. Uh, and I would also, in terms of putting it on your page uh, one and make multiple references to that you're moving over here, give the link in the post so I can just click it and go there. Uh, and then use that send message uh, thing out to, so it lands in two bases. All, you've got a chance to get it on my news feed and in my inbox. You can have for business. Page, correct? So for different or different if you want to manage multiple fan pages, yeah, you can. At zero financial uh, outflow, have, have uh, lots and lots of fan pages. Yes, there's no limit to the number of fan pages you can have. Do you have something to add there? I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 I do know that used to be the case, but I think they've made some up. No, I, anyone, they don't have to be a. Uh, no, for, but for me to personally invite them from Facebook oh, to be a fan. Then, yes, they would need to be a friend of yours. Yeah. yeah because, from Facebook. Yeah. Right. But I can send them an email with a link. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was going to make one comment that Deb Davis made <clears throat> three, four meetings ago. Uh, about fan pages in that she said, really, you have to earn your way there through your personal profile. I think that's somewhat profound and true because someone like she and, and others I know, Steve Roper, incredibly active on their personal profile. And, and so people start to see it repeatedly, and they start to like you, trust you, and I think they're far more likely than to go over and, and like you on the fan page. And that's probably true of a smaller business, yeah, right? If I'm definitely a, CEO a smaller of a business, large yes. corporation, that would be a lot of work. <laughs> Bill Hopkins, Remax Alliance. Uh, this Stand group. Up, please, for me. Thank you. Gladly. <laughs> This uh, group thing where they're putting you into groups. Can you have people in multiple groups? I have, yes. for example, a family member that could also be a client. Yes. They can be in multiple groups. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm limited? Yes. Okay. All right. So a lot of things to go over there. I want to get to our main topic because we're kind of uh, 10 minutes into where we wanted to start there. Did you have one more thing to add? Yeah. Quickly. It's a good place to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm challenged. Thank you very much. Now, no, no. 
<laughs> no, I, I, Robert Dennison with Dinner for Six. I'm always challenged with people that post ten things in ten minutes. And other than defriending them, I don't know what else to do. Well, you know what? We did a survey here in the group a while back, and, and, and I take a lot away from every one of these meetings. And nobody wanted that type of volume. You can't keep up with it. You feel like you're not doing a good job, and you stop following or you stop doing it. Even if you're adding value and you're tweeting 27 times a day the most brilliant thoughts in the world after a month or, or on Facebook or whatever, too much is too much. It would be like me picking up the phone and calling you every five minutes and saying, hey, I had another thought. <laughs> who wants Who wants that? So, you know, think about your audience. Think about what you have to offer and, and, and do it judiciously. Just because you can sit and type in your board doesn't mean you should, you know, every five minutes, right? It's, gosh, yeah, think of it as calling somebody because that's what you're asking for. You want their attention. Gosh, just do it right. So everybody has a handout. I want to make sure we get to this. And, uh, and so what we wrote down is 10 simple steps, right, to creating an effective social media marketing plan. Uh, and, and I'd love interjections as we go through this. This is, this is how we go about doing this at Webolutions and the things that we would build into a plan. And I'm only saying that for the sake of I'm open to input as well. If there's something that isn't on here or some other twists and things, that's why we're all here, right? So first thing, you know, if you're going to take on some new form of marketing or some new way of doing things, decide what you're trying to get out of it, right? I mean, who's sitting around that's bored all day and wants to do something and has no desire to get anything out of it, right? You, you can find plenty to do today. Uh, you can read a Facebook post every five minutes from, from some of your friends. Um, so what are you trying to do specifically? I think a lot of people go into this and they say, I just know I need to do it. But they don't know what they're trying to get out of it. So you can't succeed with an ROI if you don't know what you're trying to get for the R in the ROI. So are you looking to, uh, to build your contacts out there in the world? I need a larger network that I can access, right? And, and that, can be a, that can be something that you do by yourself, right? Uh, I want to raise awareness of myself or my brand out there in the market space. That's what I want to do. I want to increase my sales. Now, I think a lot of people you know, just assume I'm doing social media marketing, of course, to increase my sales. I don't care about connections if it doesn't generate money, right? So be pretty clear on that. Do you want awareness? Awareness without money, is that what you're going for? Right? So, I mean, define what you're going for. I want brand engagement. You know what? I feel like the new way of marketing out there is not all the things that people used to do. I think it's engaging people with my brand so that they go tell other people about me and my business perpetuates and it grows. So, it doesn't need to necessarily result in sales today, but I better be engaging people that's going to result in sales tomorrow. Uh, I want more referrals, et cetera. So the first thing I think to creating a successful plan is determining why you're going to start doing this. What do you think you're going to get out of it? Without knowing where you're going, you're never going to get there. Second thing, clearly identify the key personas that you want to influence. So are the people that I want to influence able to read a Facebook post every five minutes? Probably not, I wouldn't think, right? I don't know who can do that, but it's probably not the people that we're looking to attract as clients. Uh, they're probably busier than that. So who am I going after? What, what is their, how old are they? Who are they? What's their, what's their status? Uh, what's their socioeconomic class? What's their interest? How, how, can I, how can I engage with these people and what's going to make them turn a corner. So what we do is we go through and we build the personas and we say, this is Bill. He's the CEO of a company. He makes this much money a year. He's this old. Uh, here's the reasons why, what would prompt him to care about what I have to say. Here's the questions and concerns about what he'd have about my business. Here's the key factors he's going to consider when making a decision to do business with me. Here's how he makes decisions. Here's Papa and make these personas so you can identify who you're writing for. Right? Um, you know, and that, that will help you a lot get down the road with that. Number three, clearly define the experience that you want to provide out there. So we work with companies to define their entire brand experience, right? And so companies can focus on 
being a commodity. You know, I might be the only person in the market space that does what I do and I'm a pure commodity and if you want it, you have to come to me. Very few people operate in that scenario out there in the world. So then we compete on a product level. Uh, my product has, uh, you know, I give you 40% more, I charge 20% less, or I'm more convenient or whatever. Then I can move up to where I compete on a service level. I'm open 24-7, I, I do better, I, I'm a more available to you, da, da, da. or I can operate at an experience level where I say, you know what, when you do business with me, this is how you're going to feel. This is how you're, if you come to my website, if you participate with me in social media, if you read my posts, if you follow me on Twitter, if you watch my YouTube videos, this is how you're going to feel in the world and this is what I want to focus on. So figure out what your experience is and that will help gauge what you're going to put out there and how you're going to do things and make sure that what you're putting out there is consistent all the time. There's a book out there called Smash Your Brand, right? And it says if you take a Coke bottle and you, and you break it and you stick it in a bag and somebody reaches in and they feel that glass, they'll still know it's a Coke bottle, right? What are the things that let people know that are part of your brand who you are that you stand for that comes across every time you communicate with them? And think about that a little bit, right? Uh, we could probably have five meetings on that alone, but, but that's a really important aspect of what you're doing. Yes, please. Um, you saw me going the other way, didn't you? And you said. <laughs> <laughs> All part of my strategy to make exactly. certain you get your exercise, Thank Mike. You, uh, you'll remember, John, uh, months ago, you helped us with defining those, those uh, personas. And every, most of you here know we're in the haircut business, but we're really not. We're in the business of personal branding for men. That's what we do. And it was John and his team that helped us figure out that persona. And that colors every single thing that we do. And as we're working on the tweets and the Facebook posts and all that sort of thing, it has to fit that. And so I, I, I can't thank you enough for that. And, and I just wanted to underscore how important that is. Thank you very much. You're yeah, so, so what are you really providing to people and what's the experience you want them to have? All the way across the room. See, that's where I was going, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> A little personal branding, and I'll be all set, you know? You're going to lose, like, 20 pounds. Uh, uh, my question is, and, and as I listen to you talk, and I'm looking at uh, number one, define the results. I, I want all those. Um, number two is uh, everyone. What, uh, you, you know, I don't, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I can understand if I'm just selling widgets. I got one product. But if I'm selling multiple products to maybe three different diverse groups, then it gets a little confusing. So I've had three, four this morning conversations with people, and everybody's got a different opinion about how I should handle my social media. And it gets a little confusing and overwhelming, and, by, and the price points are from, you know, here to there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, how you should handle your social media, nobody can – you couldn't walk up to me and say, hey, what should I do? And I give you an answer because you have to answer number one, two, and three before – and then number four, maybe a little bit, uh, you know, before you can possibly know what tactics and what strategies make sense. Just because this works over here and that works over there and whatever, it doesn't mean that, that it represents who you are and what your brand is out there in the market space. And that consistency and that dependability and those sorts of things are what give you referrals and what give you word of mouth and what give what you do value and differentiation in the world. If it's uh, if I went to every real estate agent in the world and I said, here's your package and this is exactly what you do, why would I listen to any of them? You've got to be different. 